Hi. I bet you feel like you've been stuck in your house for a long time with no school. I was remembering that when I was about your age, I got stuck in my house. It was only like a week, but it felt like a really long time. It wasn't because of a virus. There was a huge snowstorm and there was so much snow that I couldn't get out the front door. Well, we could open our front door, which opened inside, but past that there was a screen door that opened outside and there was so much snow up against the screen door we could not push it out. It was just like a wall of snow. I remember that we had to go to a window and open up the window and there was still like a flat wall of snow there. And we had to like dig a tunnel out the window and then get up on top of the snow. And my dad pulled me on a sled to the grocery store. We had to walk to the, gro well, I got to ride on a sled, but he had to walk to the grocery store. Um, one of my favorite authors who wrote Blackout about when the power went out in New York um, also has written about when he was a kid and there was a huge snowstorm. It's called Blizzard. I'm kind of thinking that we might have been in the same blizzard at the same time. But this is Blizzard by John Rocco. And he says, this is kind of before the story actually starts. He lets us know that this is true. This is totally a true story. One day, when I was a young boy, nearly four feet of snow fell from the sky. This is my story. I kind of feel like it's my story, too. Blizzard by John Rocco. The first flake fell right before recess. And in the window it says, Monday. It was followed by many, many more. Many more flakes, I guess. They're all coming to the window to see. The wind whipped up and school closed early. This kid says, yay. By the time my sister and I got home, the snow was already over our boots. The snow continued to fall through the night and I thought it would never stop. The snow's like as high as the stop sign. The next morning, the snowdrifts were so high we couldn't open our front door. So we went out the window instead. That's what happened to me. Be careful. And I don't know if you can tell this squirrel leaving tracks up here on the roof has left a trail of tracks that says Tuesday. We laughed as we sank deep into the frozen powder. Woof, says the doggy. But walking was hard. It was like trying to move through white quicksand. Every few steps, I had to stop and rest. It was even too deep for our sled. We need sled dogs. When we went back inside, we were cold, wet, and tired. Welcome back, explorers. We made camp by the wood stove, and our feet tingled as we sipped hot cocoa made with milk. Now, where I live right now, there aren't that many people that have wood stoves, but where I grew up, lots of people had wood stoves. Looks like this family had a wood stove put into their old fireplace. They didn't use the fireplace anymore. They have a wood stove. And the very top of it has a, has a pot on it, like they're warming things up on that stove. On the third day, Dad shoveled the driveway so he could get the car out when the snow plows came. We dug tunnels and secret rooms under the snow. An igloo can keep you warm in sub-zero temperatures. What's an igloo? So this doesn't happen very much where I live now. But where I lived as a kid? Definitely, you would have to shovel the snow out of your driveway 
and then the city would send snow plows to get the snow out of the street, but you had to do your own driveway. I don't know if you can see up here, the snow has fallen in a way to say Wednesday. By day four, the plows still hadn't come. I wondered if we'd ever see grass again. The little birdie has made a Thursday there. And all these people have shoveled their driveways, but the snow plows haven't made it yet. Inside, things got tense as our food started to run out. I knew we couldn't survive much longer on cocoa made with water. It is much better with milk. We need to get to the store, but the roads aren't plowed and we certainly can't walk through this. Now you might be having a feeling like this too. If you've been stuck in your, inside your house and you haven't been able to get out to go to a grocery store, you might feel like the food that's left in your house is not really what you wanna eat. It's been happening over here a lot. Friday, the raisins that spilled out, spell Friday. On day five, I realized it was up to me to take action. I was the only one who had memorized the survival guide. I was the only one who knew what equipment was required. So he's been reading this book on Arctic survival, and he's been thinking about how to get through frozen wastelands. He's reaching in to get tennis rackets. Tennis rackets. Definitely tennis rackets. I was the only one light enough to walk on top of the snow. He made snowshoes for himself out of tennis rackets. I don't know if you've seen snowshoes before, but they spread your weight out over a bigger area and that way you can stay on top of the snow more easily. Saturday, on day six, I made a list. Milk, bread, eggs, candy bar. I prepared the sled. This is very important. You have to oil the runners. You have to make them slick. Then I set off. My usual landmarks were covered by snowdrifts, but I managed to check in with the neighbors on my long journey. This neighbor says, candles. This neighbor says, cat food. This neighbor says, coffee, peanut butter. And the kid says, okay. Now, the next page actually is inside this page and it's huge. Oh my goodness. I don't know if I can read all of this to you. There's so much, but I'm going to try. I'm going to have to put the book down. So, he starts up in the corner, and then he checked in with the neighbors, and then he helped build a snowman, and then he climbed a lookout, and then he went the wrong way. Oops, there's a loop. And then he made an angel in the snow, and then he explored an igloo. It looks like some neighbors built an igloo. And then he boom, 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 joined a snowball fight. Oh, they've got walls up so that people can hide behind the walls while they're throwing. And then zhu, 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 zhu. I made it. He's made it to Bill's Market. It's a long journey. At last, I reached the store. I was tired, hungry, and chilled to the bone, but I couldn't think about myself. I was on a mission. The grocer says, are you gonna carry all this by yourself? Yes, sir, I've got my sled. And back then, you could only talk on the phone if it was connected to a wire and connected to an outlet in your house. We didn't carry phones around in our pockets. So the whole time he was gone, his parents didn't know where he was or how far away he was or how much longer he would be. But it looks like they called the store and the person at the store is able to say, Yes, he's on his way back now. But that makes the parents feel much better. On the return trip, 
I raced to drop off the groceries before the sun went down. Wow. They're so happy to have their peanut butter. Meow. So happy to have the cat food. Grateful smiles and cheers gave me the energy I needed to make it back home. And it's dark already, and he looks so tired. But, woof, doggy's happy. Oh, and he gets a hug, and his whole family is happy that he's back. That night, we all had hot cocoa made with milk, and it had never tasted better. He's telling about his adventure. It was a perilous journey. And it looks like they put the tennis racket snowshoes up like a trophy over the mantle. But there was something else we still needed. Snow plows. It looked as though we would see civilization again. Sunday is when the snow plows came. This kid says, I guess we'll have to go back to school tomorrow. Boo! Thank heaven. I was going stir crazy. And I think that they share hot chocolate with the snowplow drivers. So they finally got to go back to school after about a week. We had survived the blizzard. I love this book. And I bet, well, there's a little bit more at the end that tells da -da -da, about the blizzard. I love this book, and I bet that it won't be long before there's an amazing picture book about when we all had to stay home for like a month or two months because of this coronavirus thing and how we survived, and how we took care of each other, and how we checked in on neighbors, and how we made do with the food that we didn't really want, but we got through it anyway. I think it's going to be a great book. Maybe some of you will write it. I hope you do. I hope you liked it. Bye.